Welcome to the December edition of the Shadowverse Meta Snapshot. As every shopping center starts playing the same Christmas music on loop to remind us about the holiday season, Shadowverse is no exception. The mini expansion introduced an array of new cards, most notably the very in-season guiding bell ringer Angel, bringing happiness, happiness to all quite all. literally by making her way into a lot of top decks in the meta. The new bell ringer Angel not only adds consistency with her draws, her shielding effect is also very annoying for decks like Latica 4. Forest. And the fact that she is a ward with zero attack can really mess with an artifact player whose game plan is to get as many of their own artifacts destroyed as possible. As cute and adorable as she may be, she has pretty much single-handedly wiped Artifact Portal from existence. Evo Shadow is the biggest winner from the mini expansion. Not only did Shadowcraft receive a new leader card, Evo Shadow is also now able to take advantage of both Susie, Hexcaster, and Sir Nunos, two new cards that synergize well with each other, and re the Evo Shadow archetype once again. Before we explore the meta in detail, remember to like and subscribe to our Tempo Strategy YouTube channel for the latest decks and strategy content. Out of all the former Tier 1 decks, Sekka Forest is the only one that has survived the Bell Ringer Angel Apocalypse without having to include the card itself. The new Forest Craft cards, Miracle Harvest and King of Vines, have made their way into the deck, with the former being used for a more potent mid game and the latter as a handy removal tool. Sekka Forest finds itself on even grounds against the new Evo Shadow and favorable across the broad spectrum of Tier 2 decks this month. The new Susie, Hexcaster, and Sir Nunos cards have brought back Evo Shadow as an archetype. The goal of this deck is to invoke Susie as early as possible, using necromancy cards like Solemn Gravekeeper, Bone Fanatic, and Luna Soulkeeper, while accumulating evolutions to empower the deck's win conditions. Matchup-wise, Evo Shadow is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sekka Forest and also share a positive matchup against most Tier 2 decks, as Evo Shadow is favorable favorable against Last Word Shadow and generally performs better against other decks, players have been very quick to transition over to Evo Shadow as the main Shadowcraft deck. With Artifact Portal getting erased from the meta by Dingularity, Machina Portal has managed to climb to the bottom of Tier 1. Calamity's Genesis is a popular new tech, offering board clear and max defense increase with World Eliminator. While similar in power level to the Tier 2 decks, what sets Machina Portal apart from Tier 2 are its incredible consistency and its favorable match matchups in the current meta, such as against Ward Haven. Thanks to the buff to Primordial Colossus and the addition of King of Vines, a Cell Forest is back. Again. The game plan remains the same as ever. Accumulate accelerate effects in the early game while dealing chip damage and collecting your combo pieces by thinning the deck. Past turn 6, Latica, Verdant Claw, and Fairy Flowering combined can deal at least 14 damage to the opponent to end the game. On turn 7 and beyond, the enhance effect of Angel's Grace turns Latica into a 10 10 storm that ignores wards for a potential 20 damage burst, resulting in an OTK against any deck without health increase or damage reduction. Giant Pastures can also be used in multiple ways to increase this burst even further if necessary. There are a multitude of viable laddering decks in the current meta, so pick the flavor that you fancy. For reliable ladder climbing with a familiar deck, Sekka Forest is a good pick with positive matchups across the board. If you are the type of player who enjoys dealing 20 damage in a single turn, a Cell Forest has got you covered. For something less complicated with a lot of new cards and fun, flexible combos, Evo Shadow will be the deck for you. After the October balance patch greatly reduced the number of decks in the tier 1 and 2 spectrum, we are back to having 10 decks within that range, with 7 of the 8 classes being represented. The mini expansion has been very successful in shaking up the meta, both Latica Forest and Artifact Portal have been eradicated, and Swordcraft, once dominating the latter, is nowhere to be seen. The meta as a whole has ended up being fairly balanced. While the tier 1 decks stand above the rest, the tier 2 decks are extremely close to each other in terms of power level, and their ranking can shift any day of the week. We expect Last Word Shadow to see less play as players migrate over to the more powerful Evo Shadow, and a Cell Forest may gain more popularity as competitive players find more success with the deck. Changes to the meta should mostly just be ratios of cards within a deck. The Storm Over Rivial expansion will be rotating out at the end of the month, and along with it previously meta-defining cards such as Holy Sanctuary, Laxus, and Invincible Monster Trio. More notably, the dreaded Necro Impulse and Ramiel, two cards that are still impacting the meta these days will also be rotating out. It will be interesting to see how Psy Games tackles the going first versus going second power balance with the departure of Ramio. We will have exclusive card reveals on our website for the upcoming expansion later this month, so stay tuned for that. 
finally, the Shadowverse World Grand Prix Grand Finals will be happening on December 19th, Japan time. Remember to tune in to watch the best players in the world compete for a life-changing sum of money. We'll see you all after the new year.